Honestly, it's crazy because you can have a hundred thousand followers and you can have a thousand followers. I have a thousand followers and make what some of my friends who have a hundred thousand followers make. And it's all about just having an audience or a following that just wants to work with you. Right. And so, um, pretty much mapping out step-by-step is to first have an Instagram account that has really good content and marketing. What that looks like is having a content strategy. So I can kind of dive into what that looks like. Um, You want to be able to post things that's nurturing your audience. So kind of what we talked about resonating and relating with them, right? That's going to come into the storytelling. That's going to come into posts that are really going to make your audience love you as a person because they've seen your failures. They've seen how you've done really well, and they've seen how you've made it or overcome something in your journey that they probably want to overcome that they haven't yet. That's the first step. That's what I always say. Let me just comment on that one thing that's really important. So under she understood her followers, even if it's a thousand or a hundred followers, she knew what her followers were, which makes it easier for a smaller group. So then she can just talk to the audience the way they want to be talked to. So having less people is actually advantageous for this. It's, oh yeah, it's huge. It's really, I don't like when my reels go viral because I just get a lot of India people follow me and I just remove them (laughs) because I'm like, dude, you guys are pointless. You're not going to buy from me. Um, But yeah, so really being able to speak to your ideal client. That's the first thing. Who's your ideal client? I always start with my, my, my business coaching clients. I say like, who are you speaking to? And 99% of the time, it should be you three years ago. Something that you've overcome from like the last three years, right? The reason why I'm a business coach is because I had a fitness business and yeah, the business did really well. And what I've learned is that I was so unpresent, anxious, stressed out. The, The way I ran my fitness business was out of lack. And I think that is why I teach business coaching is because my goal is to now teach how to run a business, not out of lack and scarcity, right? My goal is to teach my audience how to run a business out of actually enjoying it and striving satisfied. And so I know who my ideal client is and I know exactly how to speak to them because I look at my content and Arden two years ago would have wanted someone to post that on Instagram. That's how I know how to speak to and resonate with them. Um, So the first thing is nurturing through resonation. The next one, like going up, like if there was like a little pyramid, right? Um, Then we really want to lean into creating a safe, secure place for your audience. And to do this, it's like the, it's the, I got you. And then it's, I get you. And you want your audience to know, or it's, sorry, it's, I get you. And I got you. You want them to know you, you got them, that you are a grounded consistent coach. And that comes from emotional intelligence, right? You're not sending them the link. You're not cold DMing them 17 times. You're not, you know, if they say no, they're not interested. You're not still bugging them, right? It's those things around the things that I used to do in my fitness business did not make my audience feel safe. So it actually stopped them from wanting to buy and work with me and reach out to me because I was so focused on the next level, the next thing. I was so anxious. You could feel it in my marketing that I think it actually also held me back in that business. Um, So my goal as a business coach and what I've shifted into is I'm a lot more grounded, neutral, consistent. My audience knows what's coming every night around 4.45 p.m., the sunset right? My sunset, right? I have these consistent things that my audience feels safe because I'm literally a very safe person. Does that make sense? So that's the next thing that you really want to lean into with your audience is is let them know, like, I got you. Um, And then going up the pyramid, right? So now your audience, they resonate with you, you get them, you got them, you're keeping them safe. Um, Here, you want to kind of empower them Okay. And a lot of times I say empowering them through your own stories, right? That's the storytelling, but also through testimonials of your other clients, through giving an example of what a high level client looks like, right? I just made a post around what my second mentorship call looked like. I just posted that this morning. And it's like being able to say to them, hey, like this is a testimonial of what it looks like when you're coaching with me. That could be more of like a, hey, this is safe. Like I got you. But it can also be like an empower you. This is how we're going to show up together, right? Um, Maybe you're posting testimonials of clients who have worked with you in the past who are like, I love this person. She's great. So that's going to, that's going to be the next step. Um, and then we want to really lean into just your offer, 
Like you have to have a no brainer offer. You have to have stuff that, and I think this is where the industry lacks is they're like literally just like high ticket one-on-one, that's it. And like, that's going to push away all the people who are like, A, don't have the money to drop 10 grand and B, aren't really sure what they 100% want. So maybe they want to try some lower ticket thing. And then next thing you know, you know, I've had people who have tried out like a free masterclass and then paid in full the next day for my one-on-one coaching because they just weren't sure because they were like, I kind of love this, but I don't, I don't know. And then boom, that made them sure. And so being able to have an offer, that's just a no brainer and having multiple offers for people to enter your world, to be a part of it is really what's going to create not just your reoccurring income, but also just the ability to welcome more people in. You know, you said something in there that one of my top mentors told me many years ago when I was in a really low point in my life. I was a financial advisor, but I was transitioning into real estate. I was in this flux. I was hurting for money because I wasn't doing what I was supposed to do as the advisor because I just was so interested in real estate, which took a lot of money. And and it was this hard time. And I remember I went out to his mastermind. It was 5,000 bucks. I didn't have. I maxed a credit card out. I remember like just everything. I stayed at the cheapest hotel I could. I was embarrassed. And I remember like the one day when I learned where it was, I walked to his his mastermind because I didn't want to pay for an Uber. And, you know, when they went out to fancy dinners, I, I didn't go or I would just kind of eat whatever they provided. So things are rough. I've, I've been there many, many times, but I remember in that mastermind, I asked him, I said, Greg, because that was his name. I said, I need, he kind of knew my situation. And I said, I need the best advice you can give me. And I remember Greg leans into me, puts his hand on my shoulder and he says, I'm going to give you the best advice I can give anyone. And I'm like, yes, Greg, give it, give me it. And then he says, give your best stuff away for free. And that was it. And the first thing that I thought, I was like, you son of a bitch. Dude, I just (laughs) paid you $5,000. And the best advice you got for me is to tell me to give the only thing I have that I can make money on away for free. Give it away for free? Okay, I won't be seeing you at your next mastermind because I won't be able to afford the damn flight to California to come to your house. Clearly, you know where I'm going with this. That was mm-hmm. the best advice. It was the best advice anyone could ever have given me. And that's exactly what I've done ever since that point. I fought it, but I did it. And I give my best stuff away for free. People are like, oh my God, why do you do that? Everything you have is free. Like, how do you make any money? When you give your best stuff away for free, people are going to get exactly what they want. They might not take action on it, but you're going to give so much that they're going to want to give back. They're going to want what you have. So any, anything you do, they're going to want to buy it because they've gotten fulfilled by you so much. And then you find out how to monetize it by short, little, small, little ways. I agree with you. I think the people that go out there and sell these big coaching tickets, they're going to be gone. They're going to be like dinosaurs. They'll be extinct soon. Because once all this newfound printed money starts to dry up, which it already is, they're not going to have clients that can pay 30 grand, 10 grand. They're going to be looking for the real people that have been giving it all away for free because that's all they're going to have. Just like back when the pandemic started, like you were there and and people were seeking a certain thing. Well, that seeking is going to drive people to what you just said, all those free nuggets, those free things you're doing, focusing on having the right people that you're talking to, not more people. More isn't right. And I love, I love that messaging. I love how you do that. So like, what is, what can someone expect? Like if they wanted to go out and open their own business and do some of the things like from a monthly income, cause that's how we all live. What would mm-hmm. someone be able to generate doing some of these methods? Yeah. So, I mean, I have, my mentor makes over a hundred thousand a month. I make 25 about consistently a month. I think it really comes down to also like, it's going to take time. Like I wasn't, I didn't just start and make $25,000 months. I had to build my reoccurring income. I had to, you know, kind of start creating relationships, right? This was a whole new business. So like transitioning from fitness and making, you know, 40, 50 K months at some points, it was really hard to drop back down to zero. So that was definitely a really hard time in my life. That's that pivot. That, that was, that was the hardest pivot. (laughs) I was like moving out to San Diego, starting uh, my new business and just invested $15,000 in my, in my mentor. Um, and so I wasn't able to pay myself in June. It was really scary. I was like, I don't know how I'm going to pay rent, you know, and that's, that's entrepreneurship. I can tell you that. Um, (laughs) but now it's like, once you get into it, it's like, oh yeah, I love entrepreneurship. You know, one hard month is so worth the really great 
10 months that you're going to have, whatever. And how long um, did it take you to get to that point? Was it a year, two years? Um, uh, well, I hit 25 last month. So, and 25 in October. So I started in April. So about six, seven months. <laughs> That's like not even any time at all. I know. That's what people say. And I'm like, yeah, you know. But, but it didn't feel like that. Every month probably felt a lot worse than what it said. There were some months. And it's it's so funny because there's some months I remember in, in July, I like I was paying my mentor. I, I repaid. So I paid my mentor 15000 in March. And then I paid her again for another three months. So it was March, April, May, June, Ju- and then it was in July again. And I remember in July, I, w- I just moved across the country. I had spent 10,000 on the move. And that's where I was like so stressed out. I did not have the money in my bank account. So I put it all on a credit card to pay her again. But I just remember, I was like, how am I going to pay myself? Um, and it was like that moment of like, I literally signed a client for $5,000 the day before I was going to pay myself. And I was like, and then I was able to pay myself. But it's like, when you're an entrepreneur, sometimes it's shit like that, that you just have to go through to like be able to get to where I am right now. I can relate. Yeah. I think, <laughs> yeah. I think every entrepreneur has been there maybe more times yeah. than once. And I can tell you, I've been up here and then down here and then up here, then down here. And 